Jay Bootcamp. My name is Luc Vermaas and together with Gert Zwedek, we ensure that you stay informed of the latest developments in the field of business analysis. We combine different theoretical approaches with our extensive practical experience from the field so that you immediately leave our sessions with tangible tips and ideas to put in practice in your daily work. Have fun watching and if you want to be staying informed in our latest videos, follow us on Hello YouTube. Hello and good afternoon, good morning or good evening wherever you are based. Uh, for us here it's afternoon right now, so welcome for listening in to, uh, to the next episode that we have prepared uh, for you. Um, so again, new year, new content. So we have a lot of things uh, prepared for you and uh, we'll slowly start to uh, release that content over the next couple of, uh, of months. Today, Gert, um, I think a topic that maybe not everybody will find in him or herself completely familiar with, but have probably encountered this question uh, in their careers. Like, am I uh, a generalist? Am I a specialist? What, what type of BA, regardless of maybe the role or the title you're carrying, what, what, what am I? Um, but maybe more, um, more important, the question around how to how to develop myself becoming maybe more a specialist or the other way around becoming more a generalist. So I think this episode is um, you know I think a bit shorter than the typical episodes we do. So uh, but really focused around a specific uh, question uh, or um, topic that we hope to uh, yeah to clarify that for you. So hopefully uh, you enjoy this uh, this episode that we have prepared for you. But before we go in uh, further, uh, our ask to you, if you enjoy listening to our content, if you find it valuable, interesting enough. So for us to keep continuing doing this, then, then please, uh, yeah, we would ask you to subscribe for our channel because it will really help not only motivate, but also helps us to uh, spend time uh, on this, getting more content, uh, getting more content out there. So. Again, appreciate if you could do that. Thank you very much. So today, the T-shaped business analysis professional. Uh, I mean, if I just you know share some personal uh, uh, or sh share a personal story here on this topic, uh, that, that my career kind of well, where, where I kind of got more mostly involved into business analysis was around the time where I was. Um, a Salesforce administrator. It's the first role I had, but in a more more technical setting um, and I had to work directly with the business uh, kind of yeah making a an operational better environment uh, so within in this case a service uh, organization so for me it was all about very specific on Salesforce functional requirements and translating that into you know practical solutions that we could configure straight into uh, into Salesforce so for me, my career really started as more a specialist. But when I kind of, you know, went on and on and on in my career, I have spent most of my career within Salesforce for, I think, over 10 years. So I, you could say I'm actually still a specialist. But while I was doing that, I was also much more, you know, orienting in a more broader sense, being not just a, uh, indeed, carrying really the title business analyst. I kind of grew to product owner, product manager, being project manager pro or program manager, and now being the head of digital transformation at a company, regardless of the title, I'm still applying the same skills that I learned uh, in, in like 10 years ago and throughout my career that, I'm, that, that, I, that I had. Um, but it just, it orientates against, uh, you know, some different questions. Uh, so I'm actually becoming, well, moving from this or have been moving from a specialist to now much more generalist so having a much larger scope uh in this case of systems to look at yeah, and having now a team of specialists working together to actually fine tune and create what we then call digital transformation opportunities for digital transformation so that was my personal uh, story in, in in moving from a specialist to a generalist i have heard other stories you know the other way around, having an understanding of a process, but actually were so interested into a specific system that they tried to really become more of a specialist. So there are many journeys you can follow, and this episode hopefully is going to give you a bit more of that context and an understanding of how to do that and, and where, where to look for. So yeah, Gert, I guess also a topic for you that is uh, 
often asked in trainings. Mm. Um, so yeah, it might be good to share also a bit of your perspective on this uh, on this topic. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sure. Um... Uh, in, ep in the last episode, uh, episode 11, you had a closer look at the three levels of business analysis, strategy level, initiative or tactical level, and operational or delivery lever level. And we saw that BAs can work on different levels of scope and authority as well. Many BAs work at the initiative or tactical level on the improvement of systems and processes. And they often work on system improvement at the delivery level. Well, in this episode, we're going to have a look at the development path for you as a BA. It may seem easy to just step higher on the scope authority ladder, but how do you do that? We will start by explaining the specialist and generalist role, plus the combination of both. And in the next episodes, we will show you a couple of schools for business analysis, so you can decide which path is best for you. Yeah. I think that's specifically interesting, right? There's more schools out there that can really help you uh, prepare and train for any of the specific, you know, skill sets you're looking for. Yes, they're all focused on business analysis, uh, but as we all know by now, listening to maybe hopefully more of our episodes, uh, it's 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 a very wide uh, topic that can 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 have specific disciplines within business analysis. So all, already looking at probably uh, some of the roles we see here on the screen. Uh, yeah, that's that's the starting point for this episode. Um, <clears throat> we showed you these uh, earlier in uh, in the last episode, uh, and that's maybe that's where you are right now, or maybe you have some plans to fulfill one of these roles in the near future. Uh, but what they have in common is that they're all part of the broad discipline called the business analysis. Um, uh, well, let's have a closer look at the different ways to develop as a BA. Um, yeah, some of you may call themselves a requirement engineer. Uh, maybe you're working as a specialist BA working in an agile team for a while and therefore know a lot about agile software development. And maybe you're working in a scrum or common team, for instance. And this often means that you will work with product backlogs that must be managed in a proper way. And you use user stories to write down your requirements. And to make sure these stores are written in a smart way, you use the INVEST acronym. And for people who don't know INVEST, it stands for quality of user stories. They should be independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small and testable. We will do another episode on user stories. But for now, it's enough to say that working with user stories is part of the specialization of a requirement engineer who works in agile teams. Same is true for writing acceptance criteria and building and team building, for instance. Um, <clears throat> as for the specialist, there are a couple of advantages. First, you will have an in-depth knowledge and expertise in a particular area. You will spend time and effort mastering a specific area of expertise, and that gives you the unique insights and solutions to complex problems making you a very valuable asset to your organization. Another benefit of a specialist is the ability to stay abreast of the latest trends and developments in the field. And that, leaves you to that allows you to provide valuable guidance and recommendations to your organizations so that you can adapt to changing market conditions and make informed business decisions. On the other hand, you may, yourself, you may consider yourself to be a generalist BA. You are broadly educated through a master's degree in business administration, or you have done the IIBA or BCS certification, which we will cover in the next episodes of the BA Bootcamp. And that means that you have a deep understanding of a lot of topics in the organization, ranging from strategy to business process management and from business architecture to data modeling. Besides knowledge, generalists possess a large array of competencies, ranging from analytical thinking and problem-solving skills to interaction and communication skills, and from business knowledge to a wide range of tools and techniques. Being a generalist also has a couple of advantages. 
As a generalist, you will quickly switch between tasks and projects, which makes you a valuable asset to any team. Furthermore, you have a better understanding of the big picture. By having knowledge and experience in various areas, you are able to see how different parts of an organization or business function together. This holistic perspective enables you to identify patterns, connections and opportunities that others might miss. It allows you to think strategically and make informed decisions that consider the overall impact on the organization. Yeah, yeah and I think if I add here, I guess, um, uh, if, if you think about, okay, what, what, what do I prefer working at? So I guess in generalist, I see more cross-functional, right? They're often kind of spanning um, like an end-to-end -end process where it could be that a specialist focuses on a specific area of that uh, process. Uh, so that could be uh, something to, to, to think about. Uh, but what, what do you prefer? And I guess also yeah. maybe the, the type of stakeholders you work with might be different. Uh, depending on a uh, generalist uh, or a specialist. Uh, so outside of just the functional uh, domains and the knowledge and the competencies, it might also be the, the environment you're working in might be a bit different uh, uh, in terms of the people you're working with. Um, and ultimately, if you like to be a subject matter expert on a topic, rather, you know, people coming to you asking for the advice versus maybe being a generalist where uh, you need to be, uh, well, Again, from talking from personal experiences, it's also really important then to be very structured because you need to have you probably look at different elements of a process and have probably different conversations ongoing, etc. So therefore, you need to be structured, uh, almost having a bit of like project management skills sometimes in that within that role. Um, uh, or do you like to be a specialist? And again, the work is basically coming more to you in terms of there is a specific task that needs to be solved and you're the one doing it because you're the expert uh, versus the one needs to understand doesn't uh, know exactly what needs to be done but needs to figure out when uh, and why it needs to be done uh, maybe that's also a bit of a, an explanation of the difference between uh, between the two yeah yeah and there's a third option and that's the uh, the TCA professional and that's typical in the agile world people tend to call themselves t-shaped uh, and that's a person who, on one hand, has a specialty, for instance, uh, testing, and the professional knows everything about this field. And uh, it's, it's her or his ambition to continuously develop uh, the testing part. Uh, well, that's indicated as the vertical part of the letter T. Uh, <clears throat> However, in agile teams, additional demands are often made that ensure that the specialist also participates in other disciplines of the team, for instance, some analysis or even some programming. So in addition to the in-depth knowledge and skills, the specialist also builds a broader knowledge and experience considering the other disciplines of the agile team. And that's the horizontal part of the letter T. And in this episode of the BA Bootcamp, we'll distinguish two types of T-shaped professionals. First, we will look at the generalizing specialist, and we have a look at the specializing generalist and the difference between the two. So let's kick off with a uh, yeah, let's, generalizing let's, let's, specialist. Um, yeah, here, here we see a, a requirement engineer who has become a product owner of a scrum team, for instance, and therefore she needed to specialize in business case development, uh, product roadmaps, storyboarding, and release planning, for instance. But by doing this work, she finds she's lacking the knowledge and skills needed to be an effective PO. She wants to know more about strategy, for instance, and process modeling, among other things. But broadening it, by broadening her knowledge, she wants to become more effective because it will improve her communication with other organizational units. So that's where a specialist starts thinking about generalizing uh, and learning other things besides her own specialty in this, in this particular case. Maybe it's good to highlight because I think often there might be a well, misperception that, oh, but now as a, I take this example, as a product owner, I need to yeah. do all of that. Well, that's mm -hmm. not true, right? We're not saying that you need to do all of that. 
but it's mm -hmm. about understanding that all these elements ultimately are important and yep. that you can understand, okay, do I now need a business analyst who can help me in this case huh, with more uh, data modeling? Or do I need a more specialist business analyst that can do requirements engineering as part of the functional design that we're uh, building right now? Uh, yep. So it's really also about seeing the bigger picture. Like indeed, as a product business owner, acceptance you're, you're testing, one. for instance. Exactly. You're, you're, yeah. As a product owner, you're being the one being looked at, saying, "What's the vision of the product?" Uh, and therefore, uh, of course, strategy analysis is an important piece. Like you need to understand external, internal factors and how to actually build a good product, and uh, indeed have a bit understanding about processes because it might be a product that ultimately it's a product for for maybe a customer, but it will touch multiple business units that needs to provide input to make the product effective. Therefore, we need to collaborate, communicate the processes below it. Yeah, so that's all kind of skills or at least things you need to look at other than being just in your specialist uh, silo. Exactly. Huh? So, yeah. so really broaden that, that skill set. So I think that's something to know you don't have to do all of the work, but you at least need to understand the work to be done and then exactly. make sure you, that it's done in an effective way with the right people. Yeah, you could be the owner of a product that, uh, well, uh, fits a certain business process. Uh, and therefore, it would be nice to know what this business process is all about. Uh, same for the strategy. If you uh, build and sell products, software products to, uh, to other uh, companies, well, uh, you should know what the value is of this particular product uh, for, the, for the company uh, you work for. Eh? Uh, same for investigation techniques. Maybe it's, it's good to learn more about investigation techniques or team building or, or anything else that you could learn uh, from the BA uh, toolbox. Uh, to mention that uh, could help, could help you as a, as a product owner. Yeah. yeah, but the other one, I think the other one is not the next one. I mean, is not so common for most of most people, and I think this is a, a a very important one because this is the specializing generalist, and I personally believe these people can be extremely valuable for organizations because they cover the best of both worlds, and what I mean here is that they have the advantage that they have a broad view and are also able to analyze just about everything in the organization from strategy to processes and from software product development and agile to data modeling and team building initiatives. They analyze the organization and are able to assess what the organization or team needs at that time. And on the other hand, they are able to specialize in an aspect of business analysis. So they will have an in-depth knowledge and expertise in that particular area. On this slide, for example, you see a BA who has done an analysis of the business and found out that an improvement is needed considering the business processes of the organization. And in the next step, he can do two things. He can make sure that the, speci that the specialist is attracted to do the job, or he can specialize himself by diving deeper into business process management. He could, for instance, specialize in the lean philosophy, learning everything about value, value streams, and customer centricity, for instance. For the modeling of value streams, he could start specializing in BPMN as a modeling technique for this. And he could even dive deeper into BPMN sister modeling language, DMN, decision model and notation, if you have a lot of business processes with uh, complex business rules. And as you can understand, this can go on and on and on. Remember, exactly, BP there are multiple yeah. Ways, yeah. yeah, remember BPM is one of the perspectives in the bubble guide. And you could also specialize as a BA into the other perspectives like IT, agile, business intelligence, or, or business architecture. And personally, I've, I've been involved as an analyst in many agile teams. And when I found out that the scrum master was needed, who would both support our product owner who was new to that role and supported developers with planning releases and sprints, I raised my hand. This was because I saw that as an analyst, I would add great value if I could ensure that the development team picked up the right items at the right time. I think that's an important part of being a BA is that you see 
what can improve within your organization. And if that means that that's a specialty, then you maybe need to specialize yourself. So starting with the broad uh, part of the T, you can do the analysis. You know a lot of things, uh, you know a lot of topics. You have a, a very broad knowledge base. You can do the analysis, do the assessment, what your organization needs, and then specialize into that part what uh, really adds value at that particular moment in time. Yes, I, I think that gives a good understanding to everybody uh, that you can go basically from, from both directions, right? Either you're a specialist and you want to learn more about a broader skill set, or you want to be, or you are a generalist, but you want to know specific elements of a uh, yeah focus area or perspective, how it's called indeed in, in, uh, for IIBA in the Babok. And I guess uh, that gives people a lot of options when it comes to uh, development. But ultimately, it's down to, yeah. I think, an important element. Yeah, it's 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 not so much about whether you're a generalist or specialist or or T-shaped. It's about finding your added value in your organization. I think that's what really matters. Uh, making sure you help the organization uh, getting better on a daily basis. Uh, and sometimes that means that you operate as a lean process engineer. And sometimes that means you will operate as a scrum master or product owner. And in some cases you will elaborate the business architecture or you will be working within a business intelligence team. Uh, nothing is static, static in these days. So uh, in other words, uh, yeah, be as agile as possible in your organization and, and find your added value. Exactly. Well, for which, in this case, you could apply, you need to set tools, exactly toolbox yeah, yeah to, to be as widely employable as possible bas need a huge toolbox full of tools techniques competencies and methodologies uh, and in the next episodes we will look at a couple of schools for business analysis and these schools cover both generalization and specialization skills and uh, well have a lot of tools and techniques that you can enrich your toolbox with so uh, we'll be yeah, looking I think at that's those nice, next. Uh, nice. yeah. Exactly, that's a nice shout to the next. Uh, well, actually, I would almost call it like a, a a mini mini series within within the series, right? Yeah. Which within our educational uh, series. So we're going to talk about uh, navigating business analysis uh, schools, uh, because there are a few out there, um, and you could, you know, probably the questions you have that I have myself, like oh. What are the differences? What, what, why, why would I do the one and not the other? Should I do multiple? Uh, are there, you know, training paths that need uh, say, well, I need to do first that one and then I go to that school. And well, exactly to that point, I think it's good to understand first uh, the different levels of strategic, tactical, and operational business analysis, which we discussed in the last episode, uh, in the previous episode. Today we talked about the T-shape, become a more generalist or a specialist, because ultimately those factors or those decisions or directions uh, might lead to specific learning journeys you could you could follow at some of these uh, at some of these schools. So I think that's uh, going to be a really interesting uh, interesting episode where we'll compare schools, highlight the differences, uh, and 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 also kind of what kind of comes included when becoming part of uh, such a school, but not also probably more, very, very important. What does it cost uh, to become certified? Because all of all in all, uh, these and organizations don't do it for free. So there are some costs associated to it. So I think a very nice mini mini series covering four different schools uh, uh, and really uh, highlighting that uh, different shading. So if you would like to see more of that, I think it's a nice uh, <laughs> closing of uh, saying, please subscribe because we can create all of that content for you. Yeah, also let us know what you off. think of this session. Eh? Maybe you want to exactly. share your yeah. thoughts about uh, top, uh, this topic or yeah, some other topic you would like to hear. A lot of feedback. Uh, I see people responding. Yeah. Super uh, people, people being happy with the content. Some people saying, "Hey, could you do more of this, or could you yeah. do, do more of that?" Uh, so we're also really here to listen to you and understand. So, what are some of these topics that you would like to hear more of? Uh, because then we're more than happy to um, to tailor uh, the episodes more towards those kind of uh, topics. Yeah, just for, leave a note in the section below. Yeah. 
Exactly, just put a comment. Uh, we typically respond within one to two days uh, because we really like to engage with everybody. Uh, so feel free to uh, to do so. Also, maybe a new highlight for us. Uh, I think in previous episode we mentioned that we were working on a new initiative, which is uh, BA Bootcamp uh, on Teachable, which is an online learning platform. Uh, so we really try to create online content for everybody, which could mean you know free content here on YouTube or uh, maybe more in-depth courses uh, uh, where we uh, do ask for, for a fee because obviously we're putting a lot of time and effort into creating that content. And actually we have launched our first uh, course, uh, Gert. Yeah, 30 lesson course. And that will uh, lead to the, well, the, the foundation level of the BCS school we will talk uh, about in the next uh, episode. So uh, more on that later. Yeah. And you can already so have a look on that uh, 30 lessons uh, of about, exactly. let's say, uh, so 20 minutes to, uh, for each lesson. Feel free to yeah. take a, feel free to take a look. Uh, they're online. You can see the content uh, glossary uh, online, whether it fits your uh, your needs. Uh, and I think again, it's it's a nice segue into. Well, first of all, thank you for thanking you for watching again. But indeed, up next, already set navigating business analysis education uh, so there are multiple schools uh, we just highlighted bcs is that is actually one of the first courses that we have put live now but also there we have a bit of a roadmap because our next one will be uh, iiba yeah so it's going to be the entry yeah. level certificate training something we have been doing a lot in you know sessions with people in in the classroom uh, but now we're going to also build that out online so that people can do it at their own times and their own uh, in their own pace. Uh, but also we will touch IRAP, uh, a school yep. people might be uh, heard of, but also PMI. Uh, a lot of people know PMI from the Project Managers uh, Institute and you know developing project management skills. But they also have a PBA extension yep. there, which focuses yep. on business analysis. So again, four um, and they purchased that are all uh, the, yeah they purchased the Discipline Agile uh, school as well. So. There's there's a lot of good things at PMI as well. So um, yeah, really looking forward to uh, to do this uh, these chapters. Yeah. So yeah, hope to uh, see you also for our next episodes. For now, I wish you very very good day, evening, good night, day. morning, uh, and see you next time. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye.